This is a glitch stronghold. An insane site my friend Moxon found on his 10 year old survival world. And it's so cool. But you, you can't exactly use it. And that's where I decided to break the entire game just to surprise him. The second I joined his world, I was immediately blown away. Okay, pretty good gear, bro. And I can't believe this was all flat at some point. That's right, Moxon is playing on a super flat world that he's been slowly working on for the last decade. But I soon realized he left me with only four fireworks stranded in the middle of nowhere. So the first thing we have to do is to walk all the way back to the main base for fireworks. This was definitely not what I planned, but it gave me lots of time to admire the beautiful base. First I had to traverse Salacia. Then there's the harbor area right next to it with an ocean biome under bedrock. Dude, there's so much to explore. This is like 2000 chunks what you see right now. And this shot took me two hours with my godly PC. Anyway, as much as I wanted to discover all of this, we had to go straight to the mob farm for gunpowder. Which is by the way hidden in this massive recreation of the Atlantis Hotel in Dubai. And while we're walking, I think it would be a good time to tell you the game plan. First, we obviously have to find the glitch stronghold. Then we have to restore the missing part of the portal room. And finally, we have to actually get the portal frames. Introducing beta Minecraft. You simply get a pickaxe and mine the portal frames, right? Wrong. This will involve explosions and game file shenanigans. But more on that later because you finally arrived at the mob farm. And my game is lagging as hell. Dude, the cinematic render was one thing. I just had to let my PC run for a while. But now I have to actively play with the slag. Why are there so many chests? This takes forever. Oh. And now let's get the heck out of here. As you know, the second ingredient for rockets is paper. I assume we will find Moggy's sugarcane farm inside of this massive main dome. So let's go inside. And in fact, I found it after some searching. But this was the moment I realized I had 23 ender chests in my inventory the entire time with a dedicated chest called fireworks. I... I kinda feel stupid. But now that we have rockets, we can finally... I decided to spend 30 minutes making a custom totem model and another hour in the nether following a random pathway that leads absolutely nowhere. Then still staying there to farm blaze rods and ender pulse to be able to light up the portal at the end of the video, but getting lost and coming out of a different end portal and... and... It's been 3 hours into the project, what am I doing? Enough of distractions, time to get started. Luckily Moxum shared the cords in the short. Yes, that's what we're looking for. So we know exactly where we're heading to. Yo, is this it? Oh, this looks so cool. Let's waste no time and build up the portal room. We should have everything we need in the ender chest. Lanterns is our signature. Oh, this looks not as bad as expected. But now comes the tricky part. Let's load up beta 1.9 pre-release 3. So apparently in this version you can get portal frames as a drop if you blow them up with TNT. And then we can get them to the super flat world by storing them in the nether and transferring the game files. I don't know if it's gonna corrupt anything, but let's start by making a brand new world. Oh, this feels so weird. And why do I have all this stuff? What? So, apparently the game crashes if I hover over this item in my inventory. But obviously we want the real survival experience anyway, so let's throw all the stuff into this hole. Bro, you can't hold Q? Oh, my keyboard is gonna be crying. Luckily, hovering over the other items doesn't crash the game, so we can just drag it out of our inventory. Guys, do you hear this walking sound? This is so cursed. It's like someone is constantly mining blocks behind me. The first step was to make basic tools. By the way, you can't drag craft in this version, so I had to click for every single block individually. And the death sound of the cows? Well, it's better than the eating sound, I guess. This one is missing completely. Okay, it seems to get dark. Dude, I kinda get nervous. I've never played such an old Minecraft version before. The first hostile mob. 
Yo, swords are so overpowered. Now we can't get around farming creepers to get the one TNT for the portal frame, so I hope we are prepared for the night. Bro, the amount of mobs is getting ridiculous. How am I supposed to... Wait. Is this the damage sound? I swear I'm not editing this. This meme sound was really in the official game at some point. Oh my gosh. Thank you, skeleton. Okay, I'm really getting low right now. Let's look for shelter in this villager's house. Bro, where's your bed? I mean, I guess standing on five blocks of dirt in complete darkness is fine too. Let's heal up and try to get all the gunpowder we need. Oh no! Oh my gosh! Yeah, I I didn't like the seed. Alright, second time's a charm. I repeated the whole process, threw the stuff in the hole, mined some wood. Bro, this version is so much different. You can face through lily pads. I got some materials, acquired food, and guys, what are these lighting glitches? I decided to prepare much better for the night than last time and equip full iron armor. Oh, let's go! This must be a sign. I quickly found some iron and cooked it along alongside my food. And there we have our first piece of armor. But it wasn't nearly enough for full iron and I was scared to lose all the progress again. So time for strip mining. I stumbled into a cave which gave me all the iron I needed but also led me to a massive ravine. So I cooked up my iron and fully equipped myself ready to explore it. But then... This hits so different right now. I know people say this a lot, but it feels like yesterday when I played Minecraft for the first time in like 2014 on a trashy old laptop. And nine years later I sit here and still play this game. Actually, I think you should know the real story behind this channel. Since I uploaded my first ever YouTube video like four years ago, every single day I was telling my parents about my dreams to become a YouTuber, about my next big project. And after all of this time seeing my unbelievable passion, they said, you know what? You finish your school next summer. Take a year time and go for it. This was one of the moments I will never forget in my life and oh boy am I hyped to take on this journey with you guys. Let's make it a mission to surprise my parents with a real play button arriving at their house before the end of the year. Like how cool would it be to shock them even more than they shocked me. There are some crazy videos planned and I really think together we can do this. Nostalgic music trip aside, I finished lighting up the ravine, found 5 diamonds and mined 10 obsidian from a small lava lake so we could make a nether portal for the transfer of the portal frames. Then I scratched together all the gunpowder for the TNT and made my way to the stronghold, which is conveniently marked by these giant glass pillars in this version. So one of these leads to the start of the stronghold and the other one directly to the portal room. I really hope this is the right one. Yeah, perfect. As I said, second time's a charm. Nice. I blew up the portal, used another glitch to duplicate the three frames we got until we had the nine we need, placed them in a chest in the nether and messed with the game files to connect this nether to the super flat world. Now all we have to do is to grab the portal frames through the main world. No way, I think it actually worked. But why is it lagging so much? Just kidding, just kidding, it's not corrupted. I just changed the frame settings. We actually just got real portal frames and survival Minecraft. Let's place them down, fill in the eyes. And this is how I restored Moxwam's glitch and portal. Let's walk this road together and show my parents what's possible. Thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next time.